Hello, and thank you for watching. My name is Blakely Barty, and I'm a reporter for the Aiken Standard. This video is one part of the Aiken Standard's Candidates Forum, a series meant to help you get to know the candidates running for office in November. We sat down with Samaretta Muldrow and Sandra Sheely, the two candidates running for the District 1 seat in the Aiken County Board of Education. Our moderator, reporter Colin Demarest, asked each candidate five questions and allowed them to make opening and closing statements. The candidates had two minutes each to answer each question. We are presenting their answers in full with no cuts or editing, so without further ado, please enjoy the video. Hello, and thanks for joining us. This is one part of the Econ Standards Larger Candidates Forum, a series meant to get voters familiar with those running for office in November. I'm Colin Demarest, a reporter with the Aiken Standard, and I'll be your moderator. I'm joined today by Sandra Sheely and Samuretta, Samuretta Muldrow, candidates for Aiken County School Board District 1. Welcome, guys. Let me explain how this will work. Each candidate will have one minute to make an opening statement. After that, a few questions will be posed to each of you. Candidates will alternate answering first. You each have two minutes per question. When we're finished with the questions, each candidate will have one minute for closing remarks. Are we ready to begin? Sure. Awesome. Samuretta, your opening statement. Hi, I'm Samuretta Muldrow. I'm a native of Wagner, South Carolina, and which is in District 1. I, um, I graduated from Wagner Sally High School. I have, my family is there. I was born and raised there. So I have a very strong community tie with the the area I'm familiar with, the other part of our district, which is Rich Frank Manetta, uh, been going back and forth there for years, uh, sporting events, what have you. Uh, I worked in the district before, retired from the district. So I was sitting around and I thought, you know, what can I do to help my district? I'm always talking about being solutions and never the problem, and I want to be a part of the solution for taking our district forward. So I said, why not? I'll try this and see what I can do. And with that being said, it came to me, community, one voice. So we are one community, one voice. Thank you. Sandra, your opening statement. Hi there, I'm Sandra Sheely, your District 1 representative for the Aiken County Public School Board. And I want to take just a moment to thank Aiken Standard for hosting this forum for us today. And um, as your representative, I want you to know that I have experience and leadership um, that I bring to the table. Uh, I was a mental health counselor for 28 years for the um, South Carolina Department of Mental Health and also worked for the Department of Social Services and now I am a paralegal at a law firm here in Aiken. So all of those experiences combined have helped me to be able to be, I feel, a good school board member because um, I feel like I have a well-rounded um, education and background um, and what we're dealing with. I know how to deal with, with, you know, behavioral issues because I've dealt with children and adults. Um, and so I'm, I'm just always consider it a privilege and an honor to serve as a school board member. And I just am proud of Aiken County Public Schools and what we've done and looking forward to the future. Thank you. We'll move to the questions now. Samuretta, you'll answer the first one first. What are the biggest needs of the Aiken County Public School District as a whole, and how will you address them? Right now, with what we are facing with the pandemic, COVID-19, it has presented things to us that we've never seen before. So what I would like to see done is that we do more intense research and dive in more to find out better ways to provide for our children for their studies. We've, the Aiken Innovate is working, but we still have issues, and but so we need to really work on and set up pilot programs or set up 
um, certain districts to say, see what works for this district or that district so we can come to a more concrete answer for our children so they will be able to go virtually or face-to-face -face or do homeschool, period. And one of those things that uh, lacks in our district for that is access to Internet. We need to find out, I would like to find out what would it take for us to get more uh, satellites or towers to make the Internet accessible to our children, especially the children that live in the rural areas. Thank you. Sandra? Uh, Ms. Muldrow was exactly correct. Um, one of the major needs in the district and um, areas that we face right now is due to the pandemic. Um, and it is, uh, especially with our rural area, internet access. Um, but I can tell you as um, a district and a board and with the teachers and staff, we've all come together and I think made the best decisions possible that we could during this time because um, we want to keep everybody safe, but we also want to make sure that students continue to get their education. So that's why we wanted to give people an option of virtual and hybrid right now. And um, as far as the internet, I'm glad she brought that up because I've been very involved um, and had a lot to do with getting hotspots and devices for our rural areas and they're still coming in. We're gonna be getting some more really soon. And also um, this week we got word that um, a lot of our power from the district for the students to be able to access what they need is coming about. So they should have better internet access. And um, again, as just as I've worked with Bill Taylor and Senator Massey and Senator Setzler on the hot spots and everything. I'm also working with them on getting better access for towers in our rural areas because that is an issue. And even um, when we've had our uh, Zoom meetings for the district and everything, I've lost service, you know, and not been able to be a part. So I'm well aware of those problems. Thank you. Sandra, you'll answer this question next. Sure. In your opinion, has the school district kept students safe during the COVID-19 pandemic? What would you like to see done differently and why? I do feel like we have done um, a good job at keeping kids safe. Um, I was looking at the numbers and I'm gonna try to grab it real quick if I can, um, because we do have some numbers up through last week. Um, we have had a total of 18 positive cases in the district. So I think even though one is too much, I think that that's, that that's pretty well. And we have put measures in place such as the social distancing, the wearing of the mask. Um, we're using um, sanitizers um, very frequently in the rooms and especially with the elementary kids, we're keeping them in what we call their home pod um, so that they're not going all throughout the school so we can keep them separate and we should be able to do contact tracing if need be same way with with the middle and high schools even though we're not keeping them in the same rooms we are trying to keep them safe we're having um, staggered schedules so that everybody's not in the hallways at the same time and i think all of that is you know keeping them as safe as we can, but we're always looking for other ways that we can make it even safer because we don't know how long the pandemic's gonna last. We hope that it'll be over pretty soon, but we don't know. And so we're taking every measure and precaution we can to make sure we keep our students and our teachers safe because that's a, a very much, that's very much a priority for us, so. Thank you. Samuretta. Yes. Same question to you. Okay. Um, naturally, I'm not working in the system anymore, but I have been to the schools. I've, I have relationships with teachers and students that are in the school. At this rate, they are doing the best they can with what they have to, to ensure the safety of themselves as well as the children. 
I myself uh, personally made little gift bags, bags and, and took sanitizer and wipes and things to various teachers. And they were, oh, so excited. I had one to say even, you thought it was Christmas time, you know, but it's the, the, the community touch, what we have to do in order to ensure that all of our children and our teachers are safe. We can only not just wait for the district to make a move. We as a community have to step up and say, what can I do to help? What can I do to improve, help improve the conditions of the school? Uh, and you have to make yourself available to do that, and that's what we've done. Yes, they have children moving in at the high school, like at Wagner Sally. I think it's about 90 kids, 80 to 90 kids that are registered for face-to-face -face with a hybrid. And they have it set up where you sit distant space and you watch who you talk to, who you be with, that sort of thing, as best as you can with teenage children. Okay. Um, and I thought that was good. But uh, this is something that we are all learning from. And as time progresses, we're going to learn more about what to do and what not to do, but prayerfully and hopefully that we can get through all this with no, no injuries, no harm, no illnesses, no grave illnesses, and we can get through it and make it a better school mm -hmm. environment for everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Samuretta, you'll answer this question first this time. Residents at a recent town hall in Wagner were calling for a new school building and better access to career and technology education at Wagner Sally High School. How would you address these concerns? For one thing, since I was at that board meeting as well, we are concerned because so many times everything is pushed toward the inner city of Aiken with the career clusters and we don't get access. Our students don't get access to all that they could. And uh, I would love to get a task force or committee to see what would it take for us, for our children to either be bused to the local career center right out here uh, outside of Aiken, on Aiken Augusta Highway out there or what could we do to make a facility that's even closer between Rich Spring and White and Sally so those students could partake in um, career clusters. We had um, a teacher who spoke who's, he's avid about, he's really concerned and compassionate about his welding program and other things and his, that the children are not receiving all the benefits that all Aiken County students are receiving. And all Aiken County students should be able to receive equal educational opportunities. And like this, we're not. We just have two in Wagner, which is cosmetology and welding. Uh, Rich Spring, I think it's something to do with, uh, I'm sorry, it escapes me, CNA maybe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course, you have ag, and that's at both schools. But there are a lot of other things. I had a young lady that uh, developed a, uh, a website who graduated from Wagner Sally, but she didn't have the choice of doing graphic arts or graphic designs. This was something that she loved to do. She loved art, and she pursued it after leaving high school. But she's doing well. But just think what could have happened if she had the opportunity. She could have been well further advanced. So we need to delve in to see where and, and when could we get this done and the monies. Thank you. Sandra, same question to you. Thank you. Um, I, I agree there is a lot of work we need to do with the CAPE program, and I can tell you that the board and the district um, definitely are making that a priority as well. Um, we realize that every student will not want to go to college or you know they may have a talent with hands-on stuff such as diesel mechanics or cosmetology 
um, welding and those kinds of things. And so we want those things to be offered and we are offering those things. And I, as a board member, am trying to make sure that, especially when our new building is built, and hopefully that will be very quick, but even sooner than that, because we want to address it, we want to expand our CAPE program and we want to make it available to everybody. And um, I know the gentleman that she's talking about, Mr. Bailey, I talked to him and um, he's assured me that Mr. Lott, who is over the CAPE program for the district, you know, works very hard to get the CAPE teachers what they need. So we're addressing that, making sure that everybody has what they need. And I'm gonna be, you know, very adamant that especially when we get a new school that we have everything that every other school has so that all of our students have the same opportunity because just as Ms. Muldrow said, it's very important to me, to the board and to the district that every student has the same opportunities. All of our students are important and they all deserve that. They deserve the best. So I, I do want to see um, more things such as electrical, automotive, and all of those things that I've mentioned um, to be uh, mentioned. And um, I want people to know too that we're trying to be right now cognizant of the time that it takes to go to the Career Center, both at Ridge Spring and Wagner, and we're trying to develop a plan that will work and be best for the students. Thank you. Sandra, you'll answer this one first. Sure. How could inclusion and diversity be improved in the Aiken County School District? Okay, and I, I'm glad that you asked that. Um, we are working hard at trying to make sure that we always do that as well. Um, we observe uh, Black History Month, and that's important. We also have a big um, Hispanic population um, in the Ridge Spring, Mineta area, and I also want them to be to be served and to be recognized as well. Um, we we celebrate Black History Month. Um, we have an essay contest um, for Black History Month. Um, and so it's very important to do those things and to offer and to be aware of each of those cultures and to educate ourselves in that way. Um, because I know uh, right now the makeup of the area is 48% white, 35% or so black, and 12 Hispanics. And then we have roughly 52% male and 48% female. So it's very important that we reach out to all of those so that everybody is included and that everybody knows that they're important and that everybody can identify with what they're being taught and what they're experiencing. Thank you. Sam Uretta, same question to you. Inclusion, diversity. What she's saying is, is good. Black History Month and to uh, celebrate something within the Hispanic or Mexican origin, but their inclusion goes beyond that. We have our special needs children as well mm -hmm. that needs to be in, feel included. Um, you said about Black History Month, but they got to celebrate it in the month that it's meant to be. Some schools don't. It's available, but some of the schools don't because whoever's in charge or administrator or whomever they, oops, I forgot, or whatever, and then you wind up having a black history program the following month. But it was still observed, but that's okay. Also, inclusion, what I was saying about special needs children. For example, I can remember when I worked with special needs children, we had a program that allowed the students to attend CNA course at Aiken Tech. And I remember this young lady vividly. She had emotional issues, but she was a smart little girl. She went to Aiken Tech and took those courses and just blew the test up, got certified to be a CNA. This was some years back, but the thing is, then that happened, then all of a sudden, poof, the program is gone. Where did it go? So see, we got a problem with getting and keeping 
programs for inclusion and, and diversity. It's good to have it sometime, but we need to have it all the time. And to make sure that everyone feels that they are part of the school program and they're important and they mean something to them. Thank you. Samuretta, you'll answer this question first. With the Western population migration in Aiken County, what should the school district's priorities be with attendance zones, future school renovations, and other upgrades? Hmm. Well, we've already seen it in the uh, what we call the Valley area, North Augusta, all the improvements and everything to bring in the people, jobs, like Bridgestone, and of course you got the biggest plant ever, SRS, out there, you know. So this brings people in. But with that being said, we don't have, in our district, we don't have that draw. So we have to find something to be an incentive for people to move in our area to boost our area um, and let them know that if you lived in our area and your children go to our schools, then you're only 20 minutes from wherever you need to go. You're only 10 minutes from the interstate, you know, but we have to build our repertoire. We have to build ourselves. We have to promote ourselves to do this. Um, so many times we are, it's just always oh, over there in Aiken, but we are here too. We can offer something too. But that's, that's what I see it. Now, when, back in the day, as we say, when we had a Wagner manufacturing, a salad manufacturing. But see, we don't do textile anymore. So, but we were booming. People were there, you know, because jobs were there. So now you have that issue. But you can still live in our area at a good cost and not be far from work and not have to be bothered with the city traffic, you know. So I, I just think we just need to promote ourselves more and find a way to give people incentives for moving here, even teachers for that matter, to want to stay because our principals come and go, our teachers come and go. It's very hard to find someone that will stay and stick. And I would just love to see some incentives, maybe what those incentives are. That's what we have committees and task force for, to create these things. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sandra, your answer. Okay. I definitely <clears throat> know that we had, especially over the last several years, a huge growth over toward the western end of the county, like she said, the Valley area, North Augusta, and so we had to address those issues first, and that's one of the main reasons that Wagner didn't get a school then. Um, all of that was being handled right before I came on the board, but um, I know that we had to address those schools first because it was a safety issue and an overcrowding issue at those schools, and um, that's why it was becoming a safety issue because the rooms were overcrowded, the, the buildings were overcrowded, and um, so we had to make adjustments for that first. Um, and I think that periodically we need to look at rezoning. You know, I'm not a big advocate of rezoning, but I'm just saying if we start noticing a big shift to a certain area, we can start looking ahead to be prepared um, in case we do need to do any rezoning. And I feel just the way Ms. Muldrow does in that I also feel that it's important for Wagner to get a new school as soon as possible because especially young parents coming into an area that's one of the first things they look at it as a school and we want them to be proud of the schools in the area when they come in and let that be an incentive for them and I'm proud of the fact that I had a huge part with the board in getting built Ridge Spring Mineta High and Ridge Spring Elementary we're very proud of those facilities, and we want Wagner to have the same thing. Um, my son graduated from Wagner Sally as valedictorian a year ago, and you know he always talked about the 
wonderful experience he had that that school and I want to see future students have that same opportunity. My son is Hispanic and we adopted him when he was nine months old. So again, I also know the importance of inclusion and diversity and um, I appreciate all those things. And just looking forward to what the district is gonna do on these issues in the future. Thank you guys. That's it for the questions. Sandra, your closing remarks, please. Okay. Um, I just wanna say, um, that I appreciate this forum tonight and um, I'm a proud member of the Aiken County Public School Board and I feel that again I offer experience and knowledge and leadership in the board um, that I can carry over and I just look forward to what um, Aiken County is going to be in the future. I look forward to hopefully being a part of seeing Wagner Sally get that new school and get the new facilities, maybe get a new football field, whatever we can do um, to make Wagner Sally even better because that's the goal is to make District 1 just as good as the rest of the area because Aiken County Public Schools is a premier district we are one of the top districts. We have the um, the grades to prove it on our, you know, for our students. None of our our classes, our um, schools scored less than good. You know, we we did not have any below average um, schools this time, and that's the first time in a long time. So we're proud of that, and I'm proud of the fact that. My constituents know that they can depend on me, that I'm easily accessible, and that I offer integrity and, um, again, availability, that I'm always there for them to contact. And again, if they give me the privilege and honor of serving for another four years, I will do my best to continue to bring Aiken County uh, public schools forward just as it has been for the past four years. Thank you. Sam Murata, your closing remarks as well. Well, in closing, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to speak today. I know I do not bring in board expertise, but I do bring in work expertise. I do bring in student relations because of the work that I did before retiring in 2016. I see where we like, I see where we grow, I see where we've grown. I've seen changes in the past 28 years, but I've also seen things stay the same. Those things that have stayed the same is where I'm concerned about. All boards, all members, everybody, but we are still in the same place we were pretty much 20 years ago. and. I need to be able to say that I was a part of the solution for bringing us out of 20 years ago and bringing us truly in the 21st century with technology and availability for our children. Um, she sp spoke about being accessible. You can't get any more accessible than me. I live in the town of Wagner. I, r r I communicate with members of churches in the Rich Spring area I have family members back and forth. I can't even go in the grocery store without, hey, Ms. Muldrow, can I, well, can I, I, well, give me a moment. And I'm not on anybody's board, but I still get asked to help. And I do that. I am a helper. I love my community. I believe in my community. One community, one voice. That's Rich Brain and Wayne and Sally. Something fell in, in, in my heart just last night. I said, what if, if we had been thinking about career clusters, we had an old Area 4 office on Highway 39. It was converted to a, a fire department. Could have been used for an area for our children in District 1 to have a central place for career technology. Would have been amazing. It can be done. Thank you, guys.